Hey, Victory. Uh, as promised, we have the Reeves with us today from Christ Community Worship Center up in Williamsport, Pennsylvania, uh, Pastor Marwin and Lady Barb, and they're going to share with us. They've had a ex personal experience with coronavirus, COVID-19, and they're going to talk to us about their experiences, and we're looking forward to what uh, the Lord would share through to us through them. Amen? So let's get right to the interview. Uh, first of all, good morning, uh, Pastor Marwin and Lady Barb. Uh, thank you for the invitation, uh, Bishop uh, Jenkins, and of course, uh, Lady Lael Jenkins and the rest of the Victory Christian Assembly. Thank you. Um, we're here to answer the questions uh, that have been proposed to us. Um, and so I guess he here we go. Tell us about your family's experience with COVID-19, both physically and mentally. Well, first of all, um, I'd say that I was actually shocked that our family actually tested positive for COVID-19. Uh, we had followed all of the precautions uh, at the church. We did minimal shopping, um, actually used Instacart for my groceries. We did not go out of town. Uh, we didn't have people over. We didn't go into any crowds. So um, once my husband got sick, um, we really didn't think that's what it was. However, the three of us, my husband, myself, and our son, Jera, um, he tested positive for COVID-19 as well. And, um, you know, of course, the, the classic symptoms between the three of us, we had it all uh, from from fever to cough um, to some trouble breathing and loss of taste and all of that. Um, however, for me, a lot of it was emotional and um, I, I went through various feelings of being upset. I was hurt. I was disappointed. Um, I never blamed God. I knew he had nothing to do with it as far as it being his fault. Um, and I just went through different things, you know, wondering if people cared for me or um, did they forget about me? You know, you're stuck in your home quarantine. And um, one thing that I can say honestly was that I felt like I had the plague, so to speak. Um, once I was off of quarantine, a few days later, went to the store and I actually had a couple people that I knew that kind of just were like, hi, way from a distance and just kept going. I was like, wow, wondering if maybe I would have done the same thing. Uh, but the physical effect of it was very weakening for us. Um, as soon as you thought you were feeling better, you get up and try to do some things around the house or just, just try to pull yourself together. And then within a couple hours, I was just flat on my back again and and sleep. And it, it was a lot, you know, we, we had so many different symptoms actually. And my physical and mental, um, experience, um, I felt physically as if I was on like the threshold of death. Um, my physical experience was having a fever for, uh, 11 straight days uh, without it, it being broken, aside from it being um, in some way appeased uh, with medicinal um, help through ibuprofen and Tylenol. And so literally, physically, I felt like I was on the threshold of death. Um, sometimes I didn't get out of bed uh, because my body, my joints um, were in, in, in pain. Uh, my muscles were... Um, exhausted, weak, um, obviously, you know, no taste, no smell, uh, can't really eat things that would even be appeasing to you. So physically, that was my, uh, uh, you know, the 11 days mentally felt like torment. Um, I felt as if um, there were, there at, at the final stage, I felt like I was ba abandoned uh, by the Lord. Um, because it, I, I, I have never been in a fever that long. I've, I've never even experienced being sick for that long. I've never been in a hospital uh, for any kind of surgery. I've never experienced any, any, any issues in my body uh, to that extent. So that, that is where I was uh, mentally 
um, you know, at that closing stage where I felt like, okay, is the fever going to break? Um, do I have, um, do, do I have pneumonia because I hear crackling in my lungs? Like what, what's going on? And so that was, that was my experience both physically and mentally. What has God revealed to you through this entire journey? Um, I would definitely say that it was a journey. And one of the things that I think stuck out to me the most was the importance of building relationships before you actually need them, so to speak. Um, I think the closeness that you have with people, uh, those, those are the people that are going to check on you. They're the people that's going to pray for you. Um, they're the people that's going to really, really be concerned about you. And, um, you know, God, God put an angel actually in our lives who is a colleague of mine from the school board, and she's a retired medical doctor. And when I tell you, she checked on us every day. Um, she picked up groceries for us. She um, sent over her um, ox ox oximeter, I'm sorry, to make sure that our oxygen level was good. She was just so concerned and she's a believer and she prayed for us. Um, our family prayed for us. And so that's, that's what God revealed to me, just the importance of securing those um, relationships that you need to have so that when a crisis comes, you have the support that you need. The, the journey for me, um, thankfully, uh, and in concert with what my wife shared is uh, the value of the family because our son, who experienced sickness for about three days, he became our primary caregiver. Um, he prepared meals for us. Um, he checked on us continuously. Um, wanted to make sure that, you know, anything that we needed was taken taken care of. Um, from from a from a spiritual place for the journey, I, I had to, and, and I, I would invoke this upon every believer, I, I had to get to a place where I uh, had restored confidence from the perspective of, uh, because I, I, I was at the place where I felt like, okay, am, am I, am I going to die? Um, yeah, I was feeling that way, um, you know, <laughs> and uh, with that feeling, I think there's either one or two places that you can go. And so for me, the journey um, was solidified. One day I sat on a piano and I was just, I was just worshiping in, in song. I, I, I don't, I, I was not singing. I was just worshiping in song. And I felt in my heart that I was, uh, I was being restored in a, in a place of trust um, that, that, that God was, ministering to me as I worshiped uh, before him. And so that was important um, that uh, aside from uh, the necessity of, of relationship, which is valuable, that the ultimate relationship is between you and God and uh, put no trust in the arm of the flesh, you know, things like that. Um, the other thing, our lives are but a vapor. Uh, we're like grass thrown into the sun. Um, and, and so just giving great consideration to uh, the time that we have and the time that we have left. And finally, what is your message to other pastors and other churches in these times? I know that this is a very um, important and troubling time for a lot of people. So what is the message that you want to leave with everyone? Uh, the message that I would give to pastors would be, do not be weary in well-doing. Continue to press forward. Um, you know, I want to encourage pastors because none of us have been through this uh, in this century that I'm aware of. Any of us that are alive, um, I would say. And do not be hasty in your decision making. Um, let God finish doing the work that he's doing in you and in his church globally. And what I would say to the church is, uh, do not be at ease in Zion. You know, we can't get comfortable. Although we're home and, and we're having uh, church come to our homes, we need to come to church. 
come to your computer, come to your phone and have that appointed time when you know that the believers are gathering from your assembly or another assembly that you have fellowship with and you know they're preaching the adulterated, um, unadulterated word of God, um, make sure that you come to church and pay attention. You know, um, it's, it's like we, we get busy doing other things and it's almost like you're watching Netflix. God doesn't want it to be like that because you're really tricking yourself and not getting what you need to receive if you're not focused on the service that's before you. I, I agree with every word uh, that my, my wife shared in that um, I, I, there are so many things that I could share um, when it comes to uh, pastors and churches from the perspective of uh, a lot that I have heard and, and much that I have uh, in, in one way or another prior to this, um, much that, that I have said as well. And so my thought process is um, get, get your heart uh, right before God. Um, in, in, the, in this process, you're going to make you're going to make decisions that will forever be scrutinized. Uh, you're going to make decisions that that will be right to some and wrong to others, as it always is. Um, but if if your heart is right before God, those decisions uh, will ultimately be right with God. And I think that that's important. Scripture says, keep your heart with all the diligence for out of it flows the issues of life. And I think that that could not be any more uh, relevant uh, to us today because we're home. Uh, we have the opportunity to be able to uh, experience uh, God in our homes. We have the opportunity uh, to experience uh, all that God, <laughs> all that God provides to us and for us uh, in an individual way. And and so I think that when the heart is postured correctly, uh, the the mouth, the hands, the feet, uh, the eyes, everything uh, about us will. Uh, correspond to our heart, the posture of our hearts toward God. And so I, I would encourage all pastors, uh, take this opportunity to do as much reading as you can. Um, like just infuse yourself in the word of God, uh, infuse yourself in in, in greater prayer with God uh, and infuse it upon your family. Um, let that be the station, let that be the center of, of all that you do. And I believe that from that, uh, that we will experience a personal revival. Uh, we will also experience uh, revival uh, in our cities. Uh, we'll also experience revival in our nation. And so uh, that would be my word uh, to pastors uh, through this uh, crisis that we're experiencing. Thank you for giving us the opportunity to share with you and uh, in some way to impart to you what we were able to learn. I know uh, it's been valuable uh, for us together um, as a unit, and uh, we just appreciate the time that we've been given. Uh, thank you, Bishop Jenkins, and of course, uh, Victory Christian Assembly. Uh, many blessings to you.